I have found that the way that math has been taught to a lot of people in school, or maybe the way they've taught that to themselves, has caused them to have a very fundamental understanding of misunderstanding of what math is. Simply put, most people have studied it wrong, and they do not understand what math came from and what it was meant to originally solve. And this kind of a misunderstanding is actually holding you back in your machine learning, AI, or uh, any other career where you're applying mathematical reasoning and concepts to very ambiguous and often very unclear fields. I would just like to give you some examples of that. Starting from a very broad and general sense, you know, too many people try to think of math as something that it has a very clear set of rules. We are often, uh, and we derive one thing from the other using logical statements and everything is nice, tidy, provable. And that is just patently false. If you know anything about Gödel's incompleteness theorem, you'll know that a system cannot both be complete and consistent. You can check out what that means. It's a very great, interesting theorem. But basically, that goes to show what that goes to tell you is you cannot both have a system completely without axioms or completely that uh, does not contradict itself. And going from this very general, almost broad example that nobody can that a lot of people don't really get. To a more specific example, I want to talk about data and machine learning. And I want to introduce you to this concept of partial pooling, which uh, Ritwik Math did a beautiful video on, and I'll link it in the description, so I would suggest checking it out for more details. But in a nutshell, what partial pooling is, is imagine we have five sets of students who took an exam, five different batches, and if we were to take the average of each of those pools individually, each of those batches, that's the pooled averages. If we were to combine all the data uh, of all the students across the different batches, mix them up and then take that data that's coming from an unpooled sample. So that's coming from the pooled sample. And essentially what partial pooling does is you combine uh, the unpooled, so you take one batch and you might take the unpooled data and you try to, and you add them in different ways to, based on what you want to do and the, to achieve your results. And a lot of people, you know, at first this might seem a little wishy-washy, and that's kind of my point. A lot of math you will see is will be in, you'll, you'll just kind of be applying concepts because they kind of make sense. You hope that the results work out. If they stick around, they'll work. If they don't, you just have to say, okay, this didn't work. And you know, you're trying out different, uh, you're doing using trial and error on different weights and biases you're trying to test different things. And this was something that helped me back a lot because when I first started getting into data and machine learning, I was I still had this view of the textbook kind of math, which is you get a very clean, clearly defined problem, and then you sometimes have to be very clear, but there's always a clear, correct, and optimal solution. And what I have found in that in most, in my experience, a lot of machine learning, a lot of the reasons we get hired is because there is no such solution like that and the best we have to do is we have to come up with approximate models that work good enough and iteratively work over time to hope that they accomplish the, or the results we want. Uh, as again, as mentioned earlier, I'll be linking the Twix math video to, so make sure you check that out and if you enjoyed this video, if you found this helpful, make sure you hit the like button and subscribe for more content. As always, uh, make sure that you're connected with me on LinkedIn, Instagram, and Twitter for more such content. And if you are somebody who's getting into the AI tech space, make sure you're checking my, you look at my free co weekly coding letter, newsletter, coding interviews made simple. That's helped a lot of people ace their coding interviews and get into the tech space. Thanks for watching. Peace. Let me know what you want to know about next.